Welcome back. Another episode of Entering the Upside Down with Summer Joy and Nicholas. Perfect. Um, to do, today's episode, we're going to be talking about um, spooky hotels, I think, huh? Yeah, spooky hotels is our theme today. It is November 5th, a Friday of 2021, and it is currently 30 minutes to 9 p.m. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we got the kitties in here creature sitting between us and then Lana sitting behind me if you're watching the visual version you can see my brand new bougie silky black robe and I'm wearing cute bunny slippers last time we spoke to you guys was the episode we dropped before Halloween and we haven't talked to you since Halloween so just a little recap for Halloween we went to Nick's mom's house and carved some cute pumpkins I did the little kid Sam's uh, face from that movie Trick or Treat. It turned super, out so good. Yeah, super fast, super good. And <clears throat> to see that pumpkin, you can go to my Instagram. If you're following us on Instagram at entering dot the dot upside dot down, then the handle for my Instagram is in the bio. And then Nicholas did a cute, nice classic Jack Lantern face with an inverted cross between the eyes. And he put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in that because that baby was not a carving <laughs> pumpkin. Uh, it was like a decorative <laughs> pumpkin. I don't know yeah. what my mom th- was thinking, but it turned out flawless. I think Sherry was trying yeah. to be bougie this year we with can, the pumpkins. Like, insert pictures somewhere. Definitely. Yeah, they look good. We'll be posting some pics for you guys. And after we did that, we went to Monster Jam. Hell yeah, brother. Which was fun. It wasn't busy at all. Like, the bleachers were not filled. And it was cool. We got to see some monster trucks competing in different little competitions like donuts. And, of course, Grave Digger was winning everything. Yeah, I was voting for Scooby-Doo. I think it was uh, Grave Digger's 40th, right? Yeah, something like that. The, the truck's, like, 40th anniversary. It was cute to see all the little kids there with their grave digger shirts on. Right. Reminded mm-hmm. me of when I was a child watching them. <clears throat> it was like uh, a little less eventful than what I remembered. I remember it being like way louder <laughs> and exciting, but I feel like it's because uh, not a whole lot of people were there when I went, when I was a kid. It was like packed, packed, like packed, packed. Yeah, I feel like Monster Jam has kind of dwindled the yeah. last few years. It's not as popular. Yeah. But when you are a kid, everything seems more intensified right. and loud and yeah. bright and big. Yeah. I feel like COVID has like slowed a lot of events down as well. You know? Yeah. Peach is so cute. He's got his little paws on you. After Monster Jam, it got out pretty early, which was nice. We weren't out too late. And we went home and we watched the newest Conjuring movie, The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, which was good if it wasn't supposed to be based on a true story. I think for a future episode, I have so many ideas, but I thought it would be cool to cover that case and talk more about David's pres- uh, possession because the movie just focused more on Arnie and a lot of shit went down, but yeah. Nick fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep first like 20 minutes. I was poop, man. He was I'm snoozing. Get- I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So yeah, this is Entering the Upside Down. Make sure to follow us, subscribe us on everything. You know, if you're watching the visual, then just to give you a little FYI, we are on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on all the things. Follow our Instagram, entering.the.upside.down, because every time we post an episode, I make a post that's related to the episode, so you guys can have more visual of what we're talking about so what we're talking about today is haunted hotels and I'm going to definitely put some photos of the hotels we're talking about there and this is a cool topic because it's kind of personal to both of us the one I'm going to talk about is very close to our heart for both of us we've been there a few times stayed the night 
and <clears throat> I looked in a little bit of the back history of the town in general just to give you guys more of an insight about the, the history and the hauntings and we'll share a few personal stories so that's when I post on Instagram it's going to be exciting because it'll be the first post where we actually have personal photos of being at the location in there you know my haunted hotel that I chose is the Silver Queen Hotel and this hotel is located in Virginia City Nevada it is in our backyard Virginia City is right next to Carson City Reno Dayton it's like the center of all these other little towns and cities such a beloved little city man. yeah everyone that's grown up here has a real love for VC mm -hmm. and it's such a sweet town the right. locals everyone there is very very kind it's funny to me when i'm listening to other spooky podcasts and people mention wanting to visit vc or like they think it'd be so cool or there was one i was listening to and they talked about how cool it would be to stay at the silver queen i'm like we've done that like four times right. if anyone's listening from outside reno or nevada i suggest to go there on you know, like a non-spooky setting, you know? Like, yeah. Just go there for vacation, man. Everyone's so fucking sweet. I keep saying that, yeah. but everyone is so kind there. and um, You'll make friends instantly, no matter what place you go to. The locals are phenomenal, yeah. and I feel like they like to be asked questions and talk about their encounters. It's a fun thing, and I'm sure 99% of the people that live there believe in the paranormal because... It is said to be one of the most haunted places in the U.S., which I know that a lot of articles you find, it's like every haunted place, you always find an article that says most haunted place in the world, you know, it reminds me of like coffee shops, best coffee in the world, <laughs> but right. Virginia City is pretty yeah. spooky. Uh, yeah, the, the history behind it, we've uh, taken many a tours and for a minute there we're going like twice a year and staying right yeah we haven't so, gone um, since the pandemic yeah, hit yeah. the last time was february of 2020 yeah. we like made our second home and made many friends there true yeah, and a little second home i'm yeah. away from home dude silver queen is the best i'm also excited for this episode because every time i listen to a podcast about haunted hotels it's always focused on the east coast which there's nothing wrong with that i do get the east is a lot more spooky there's been native americans all over the u.s but when the white man first came over and colonized it was on the east coast and there was a lot of blood shed tears murder torture a lot of burial grounds over yeah there, so that that side of the u.s i definitely do think there is more hauntings and it just it's because of time and it's been crazy over there so we will definitely touch base with a few haunting things throughout this podcast over there but i'm really excited because this is focused on where we live and right. the west side hell yeah and we're all in what episode six yeah i think this is our episode six right. it's so crazy yeah, man we have so much to talk about oh shoot i also wanted to go into our website thing that i use for our podcast it's how i upload it and pornhub.com get it logged into everything because it has right, we, we should take a poll if we should start only fans beans why do you keep saying that it's just joking <laughs> jeez louise that's for the money that lady oh my god so anyways <laughs> just kidding i logged into the little website thing i use to control our podcast episodes and so far, as of today, we have 83 downloads total, which I just think is amazing. That's crazy. <laughs> that people listen to our podcast 83 times. So diving more into that, you know, I always I look at like the devices people use and whatnot, but I think it's more interesting when you look at the locations because there's people in Asia and Europe listening to us. You have seven in Europe? <laughs> Yeah, so 74 of the downloads are in North America, 7 are in Europe, and 2 are in Asia. So if you crack it down even a little bit more, of those 7 in Europe, 6 of them are Germany, and 1 is the United Kingdom. 
and then you crack it down even more to cities, all six of those German downloads are from one city, Frank first. So it makes me think it's one person listening to that lives in Germany. Yeah. Shouts out to the homie in Frankfurt for sure. Yeah, so I wanted to give you a shout yeah. out. <laughs> Super cool, man. Very, very cool. They're man, woman, whoever. I say yeah. man, sorry. But Thank you for listening yeah. to us and yeah. very it, appreciative. I think that's so awesome that we reached that far and I feel like it's one individual. Oh, and if it is sorry. you're yeah. good. If it is you, send us an email at entering the upside down at gmail.com and say hi and if you have any personal haunting spooky stories that you would like us to read on the podcast let us know because we would love to do that and get to know you there's a, somebody from Ontario Toronto is listening like there's so many different places Salem Massachusetts which I think is sick. Uh, 31 per of them, so 43% is from Reno, Nevada, so it's all our homies. <laughs> right. I like, there's uh, Charlotte, North Carolina as well. Shouts out. Yeah. Got a lot of family in North Carolina, but uh, I'm most interested in uh, the homie from... Uh, Germany? Frankfurt, yeah. N- yeah. N- no disrespect to all the U.S. homies, but uh, if whoever's listening to this from Frankfurt contact us it'd be cool to like say what's up and like yeah. know who you are and I wonder talk about some cool is. stuff yeah. I'm gonna and uh, maybe you could tell us some uh, spooky history about Frankfurt you know yeah super cool All right. if you want a shout out let us know very cool yeah. alright to dive back into Virginia City I wanted to start with a little history of the town just so you guys can get a understanding of what went on here and why it is a hot spot for paranormal activity. A lot of paranormal investigators come to Virginia City and one of my favorite groups to watch is the Ghost Adventures. So you got Aaron and Zach and Billy and what is the other one's name? No I feel idea. bad. I, I, I don't watch it. <laughs> but... They've gone to Virginia City multiple times, and the townspeople there love them. They In a lot of the shops and the bars, they actually have photographs posing with the members and get to keep props that the members use when they're investigating. So it's it's kind of cute how right. they're little, little fans of them. Yeah, I don't know if this is in your notes or not, but um, a lot of like um, smaller paranormal groups go through there as well because every time we stay there, uh, there's always... Um, multiple groups going through the silver queen uh, yeah it's like going through like little independent groups nick's like trying to fart in the background so they're like what's that yeah i'm always like like making little noises in the background (laughs) being a little shit but (laughs) (laughs) we visit virginia city all the time it's easy considering it's in our backyard and we're both from reno nevada born and raised We've stayed a night a total of four times, all at the Silver Queen Hotel. Some of those stays were actually full weekends. A lot of what I'll be talking about has come from my own brain and recollection of tours that Nicholas and I have taken in Virginia City. There are many visitors and tourists to this small town, including many paranormal investigators. And I believe the Ghost Adventures crew actually investigated the silver queen hotel a total of five times they got one on us bastards <laughs> i know <laughs> we've explored the cemetery during the daylight and nighttime multiple times i love the mark twain casino which is the only 24-hour bar in town the last time i checked we've bar hopped testing out all the deliciousness of all the bloody marys the silver queen had one of the best bloodies as well as the washoe club in my opinion we went to the Bonanza Casino and had the bloody there, but they used that really weird pepper yeah. that did not taste good. Yeah, they were really like a um, like a mealworm or something like a yeah. yeah it's gross, it tasted kind of watered down yeah. to that bloody. N- not knocking that one, but wasn't as good. Yeah, it wasn't my favorite. Yeah. Which what was it? The Washoe Club or the Silver Queen, where like the bartender lady was very proud that she like got labeled best bloody mary uh, i think it was washer club yeah yeah washer club has one of the best mixes out there we also have um at one point give a shout out to the homie jay yes yeah. he has this wood carving shop that is really beautiful maybe i'll include a photo of 
that as well because I have some pretty cool photos. And we got a nice carved Bart Simpson from that and a Jack Skeleton. Right. And he does some massive pieces yeah. too. Like, well, like we went, um, first time we made friends with them. Second time we came back, he recognized us. Mm-hmm. And then third time, uh, I think he got hitched down and married. So his wife was in there. Yeah. Not, not letting him, uh, participate in the, the activities that we usually do up there. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, shout out to EJ. True. Your G homies. for sure. Hi, yeah. Otis. <laughs> We've done many tours there, including the Washoe Club tour, where we got to enter the crypt, which is where they used to have to stack dead bodies back in the day when the ground was too frozen to bury them. The Ponderosa Saloon Mine tour, where we experienced the circumstances that miners worked under. The Mackey Mansion tour, where the one and only Johnny Depp stayed the night 20-something years ago and had a paranormal experience himself. I love that. Mackey one was mm-hmm. very I would like yeah. to do that one again. Right. And um, that uh, that girl that was doing it was like very sweet. She was like right out of high school, like right. Like, where's she commuting from? I think it was like Gardnerville. I think she or? said Dayton. Dayton, yeah. She was like going she, from Dayton to do this every day. Like that's so cool. Yeah. And she got to learn all this history yeah. about this historical building, yeah. and she gets to do tours yeah. all day and very knowledgeable. Appreciate the architecture. Right. It was she, cool. I would like to her as well. Right. I would like to be a tour guide. I think that would be fun. Like the guy we had in Truckee was really cool. Yeah. His name was Rhett, I think. Rhett, yeah. (laughs) He wants to even I think do try to get in contact with somebody to do outdoor tours at VC, which I think would be cool because that hasn't been done. You always just have like a tour for a specific building inside, but the Truckee tour we did with him, we got to walk around the town and we'd stop in front of the building and he would give a backstory of the history of the building murders that happened in their death and it was a lot, really cool so i think that would be a great gig for him right and um especially that tour there's um unfortunately with trucky there's a lot of rich pretentious assholes. pretentious buttholes up there and so like he was getting um it's like heckled half the time it's like people are walking by like laughing and like whatever, it's like but, you're enjoying this town yeah. where do you think it came yeah. from yeah and then um half the tour that we were with ended up leaving disappearing yeah. randomly right and uh he just kept going man yeah so Rhett was his name right? i think i'm pretty positive it was Rhett. Yeah, and um yeah coolest dude and then uh at the end of the night we just were having the best conversations yeah. dude rips man on so many levels and he loves the history just as we do like um i mean spooky things are great but summer and i both just love like the history of reno and the history of nevada history of where all this was made from so yeah all right sorry beans oh you're good going on little mini tangents (laughs) uh johnny depp actually stayed in the mackey mansion he had a spooky experience he awoke i believe he was sleeping in mr mackey's room and he awoke to two little girls jumping on the bed and they ran away disappeared he looked everywhere for them and couldn't find them we also did the railroad tour that takes you through the back of virginia city all the way to goldfield that one was really cool i would love to do that one again and actually get off the train at goldfield and explore there because we've never actually explored goldfield yeah. like and- that <laughs> so chiming in on the the Mackey Mansion, one of the things that tripped me out the most was the um, s- the height differences, the, um, oh, yeah. the evolution of man, or like yeah, just man in general. The like the beds, the doors, the stairs were so mm-hmm. fucking tiny, man. Mrs. And, Mackey's and, dress was yeah, creepy, and, childlike. Uh, I, I'm a tall guy, so we we're walking up the stairs, and then uh, we saw the room that Johnny Depp stayed in, and we looked at the potty toilet was literally what a foot off the ground like yeah. so fucking tiny i was like right no way in hell would there, i be able to get into that door a little and take a poop mm-hmm. in there man we'll definitely do a haunted house episode and i think it'd be fun to cover the mackey mansion more in depth and mrs mackey was stunning there's such cool photos i have of yeah. us in there yeah. and she's a babe <laughs> And talking about the height thing, when we did the Ponderosa Saloon mine tour, they actually talked about 
the height of these miners back in the day and how short they were and how Abraham Lincoln was considered a giant and he was six foot two and that's as tall as Nick is. Isn't that crazy? Back in high school, I actually did the schoolhouse tour as well on Halloween with some friends and I don't really remember it that clearly. I would like to do it again. I think that would be fun. There's just so many things that we still have to do in Virginia City and redo. Sure. And, um, it's a piece of advice as well. If you want to um, go to BC, I'm like getting off topic. I'm sorry, okay. but no, just go stay somewhere and don't do any tour. Like at first when you go up there, just go uh, stay somewhere and just sit outside, have a beer, do whatever, and whoever you see talk to man like that's how we learned so much from that fucking city it was just like from sitting outside and talking to locals and uh yeah. just meeting people man like everyone was so fucking friendly there and i feel like uh, it's one of the last places you can just go to and throw away your phone throw away everything just go outside and have a conversation and that town will uh bring the history to you you don't have to look for it like at all just like go and talk to someone man like Literally, everyone is very, very, like, um, like well, um, that's the word I'm looking for. Educated? Educated on, yeah, on the, the history of that city, and I, I miss it heavily. Like, it's every, there's no bad time up there. Every time we go up there is phenomenal, and we right. always make friends every single time. There was this older couple we met when we were staying at, staying at the Silver Queen one oh. time. I think it was our second time going up there, and... It was a spontaneous trip. We decided just to go for the weekend. Turns out we went when, on the weekend of the Civil War reenactment. When they had the fire escape still open by yeah. our favorite room. Was it 18? No, I think it was, we got room like t- 26. 26. And we got that room twice, I believe so. Yeah. It's on the upper level and it's, ooh. <laughs> it's one of the average rooms and it's by the fire escape and the window is facing the opera house. And it was nice because... Nick would be able to just sit out there on the fire escape and smoke his cigarettes. And we we would actually, I'm sure this wasn't even allowed. It's probably why they keep the window closed now. But we would come and go through the fire escape because it was a lot quicker than taking all the stairs. Dude, that that was so fun. (laughs) Every time, just like explore and climb up. and There's always someone out smoking. You had your knee brace on from... Right. one of your surgeries right it was, a, it was so much fun man it's like uh especially because the opera house is right there and uh there's always something going on on that street was it c street or no c street is the front street the front I street. Believe. what was the back street it's, uh, let's look up a map real quick the clampers house is that one that we'd look at you know yeah uh, which is also a funny story because everyone thinks i'm a clamper <laughs> <laughs> Because it's the um, clampers, and then that the business to the left. There's always something going on. What it's is that? B Street yeah. that the Piper Opera House is on. Right, the Piper's Opera House. There's always something going on. And it, uh, that's supposed to be spook right. spook too. And no matter what time I I would go out and smoke a cigarette at that place, there'd be someone sitting out with like some story, something to say, someone to meet, and always the most pleasant of uh, human beings. Nick and I also have walked through a lot of the stores, if not all of them, and the beautiful churches. The older looking church was infatuating and one of the current owners, I think they were one of the current owners, chatted with us and let us poke our heads around. The little balcony inside. Yeah. This little town gives you a workout when exploring. The hills are steep, just like the stairs, and it reminds me of San Francisco. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Virginia City has very steep little hills, so your calves start burning. Right. There's a little store out there. Um, it's just like a little convenience store. You could get things. We've made a few beer runs at that store. It's close to the cemetery. And walking from the Silver Queen Hotel to the store and back, once you're walking back and you're carrying things. Right. <laughs> it's the um, the RV park. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a little store, and there's, like, a little RV park, and the store's, like, within the RV park. Some actual history about it, because that's just mine and Nicholas's history, oh is God, that... We could go on and on about <laughs> these. <laughs> yeah, I figured, because this is, you know, hotel-based, but 
I figured giving you guys a little background of the city and then for future episodes, if we decide to cover the Mackey Mansion and whatnot, I won't have to go into the history and background of the city. So Virginia City is in Nevada, located in the mountains near Carson City in Reno. Fame of the city grew in 1859 due to the Comstock Lode, which was the first silver deposit discovered in the U.S. Population was around 900 and quickly grew to 25,000. Now the population is back around 779 as of 2020. By 1878, the mines started to dwindle with silver as well as the population. You notice that a lot with these ghost towns in the wild, wild west that set up shop for mining. They start big and grow fast like wildfire and die out just as quickly as they blew up. It's nice that VC, it's what we call Virginia City, has stayed relevant and populated and we get to visit it and appreciate it. And it hasn't just become a ghost town like a lot of these towns have. Virginia City actually funded San Francisco. Cool little fact, everyone loves and knows about San Francisco. It wouldn't exist if not for this little town. Right. And when we were talking about talking to people and meeting people, we actually met this older couple during the Civil War reenactment weekend when Nick was smoking his stogie outside the window of the fire escape. The old man was really cool. The lady was, she's like, let the men talk. Right, no. He, he's joining me in a smoke. We're just out there. But he yeah. was like, uh, the woman was like, let the men talk. And someone she was kept, like talking to her. <laughs> but, she kept like talking about such random things with me that I didn't find interesting. Yeah. I was trying to hear what this Dude. man was talking about. But she did say, mention how Virginia City funded San Francisco. Yeah. So that's where I heard that from and later looked into it. Right. That gentleman's, uh, what he had to tell us was super interesting, man. He's, yeah, he had a cool story. Yeah. He um, bought a pack mule and was traveling on foot and had to fight off a coyote. Yeah. and Way back when. Mm-hmm. Like, he's lived a cool life. Yeah. I know, like, a lot of people are going to be like, that didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. But he's, he was up there in eight, uh, years, so he was, uh, it was like before... Any of like the main roads were built back then, yeah. so you say I was uh, out there just being a fucking like before cell phones. Yeah, just living it, man. Yeah, and you like tell just like the the passion between his stories and yeah, he's a cool guy. I wish I remember right. his name. I know. When the gold rush fizzled out in 1850, California went through a depression. In the spring of 1859. Two penniless Irish miners hacked into a bluish black rock east of Lake Tahoe. This was the richest discovery of gold and silver ore ever discovered in the U.S. These silver veins were said to be the size of football fields. We did a tour in the mines connected to the Ponderosa Saloon and got to walk inside one of the mines and we actually were able to see the glowing rocks as well as the darkness these men had to work with. At the end of the tour, the tour guide lights a single candle and turns off all the other lights to show how dark it was. These men would eventually adjust to the darkness after spending hours down there. It was cool to see the tunnels. They were probably stumbling drunken. These miners did not know how to act, okay? They were the richest paid miners at the time, making close to $4 a day and working 12-hour shifts six days a week, which would be... I looked at it with an inflation cal calculator, $132 today. What are they going to blow all the money on? Well, obviously whiskey and prostitutes. Well, and the, <laughs> yeah, uh, when the water is too dirty to drink, what are you going to drink, you know? Yeah. And so <laughs> I, produced, yeah. right. I looked into how much a beer would cost in the 1860s, and it was somewhere around 12 cents, give or take. There was a lot of different responses and suggestions of how much a shot of whiskey or a bottle of wine was like a dollar it was it was all over the place but what I got mostly was around 12 cents the miners spent a lot of money on alcohol and whiskey it was said that some of these men were actually belligerent drunk while working on the job and part of the reason was that the alcohol was cleaner than the water and it was more sanitary than the water they had also water was very sparse at the time and it wasn't until 1861 when Virginia City actually got a water pipeline leading from Lake Tahoe to the small town of VC. Virginia City has had a lot of misfortune, like many towns have. 
and especially wild, wild west towns. You mix all the unfortunate fires they had, disease, and the wild, wild west tendencies, and you get a lot of bloodbath. The cemetery is mostly of miners and their families. It's sanctioned off for all the different religions of the miners. Of course, there was a lot of ladies of the night, and if you were a prostitute, you weren't given a proper burial, leading to a lot of unmarked graves. The grave markers are made up of different material from wood, metals, and stone. It's a very beautiful cemetery, and we've only experienced good things there. I have heard and read and watched that some people do experience bad or more spooky things. We have some personal stories, but I really do want to save them for when we do a graveyard episode. So you'll just have to make sure you follow us and stay tuned because... I'll, I'll keep my stories <laughs> at bay then. Yeah, because we have some stories with the, the graveyard. I think there's more per spooky stories with the graveyard than we've actually had in the Silver Queen. Because I feel like when we stay at the Silver Queen, it's pop in nights it's busy every room's booked and maybe that's why maybe we need to book it on a slow night and we might experience something but the graveyard is definitely a hot spot yeah it's um i feel like with um like spirits and such peace of mind like or just like a general ease of it you know is when most things happen in uh the graveyard there i've had nothing but great 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 experiences never anything terrible and uh silver queen i'm never looking for anything though you know i'm just like yeah. silver queen is just like home oh, man every time i'm there i'm just like i feel so cozy it's like never like spooky well, we never had a weird yeah. bad experience in the tone of paul cemetery too yeah. and that one's supposed to be super haunted oh, with dude. black mists and shit we're, when i was crying that night yeah that dude. one felt more heavy than the bc we're, one we're gonna save that story but yeah, yeah we have to it's, save it. it's uh ne <laughs> never bad times anywhere we go everyone's like um like oh like you say to the silver queen like did anything happen i'm like no like we're there to just give love to whoever's there and if anything happens it happens if not great and uh, i feel like we just go there with open hearts and just love and mm -hmm. I'm more so just going there to just enjoy and like that's like my <laughs> fucking calm place that's my vacation spot I mean, and the graveyard as well as my vacation spot like it's like to go and be quiet and just yeah give love to all the the buddies that have passed and I love reading the the, the grave yeah, markers yeah. giving my love to the history of that place because yeah if you guys want to check out a vlog I made back in the day, it's from like two years ago, but it's one of our trips we took to Virginia City. My hair looks a lot, of sh lot shorter. Boots' beard looks a lot longer, but it's not my best vlog. I think I mostly just put music over it, but you can see what the inside of the rooms look like and the town. And I think it would be really cool if you want to check that out and see something from our experience. The next time we go, I should make a more up dated vlog yeah that's out there i feel like we're overdue <laughs> definitely go back and miss that place <laughs> only important and considered worthy people were given proper burials so there are a lot a lot of unmarked graves many of the buildings basements and rooms were used to stack bodies of deceased people and store them throughout the winter until the ground thawed out enough to bury them in late spring which I can't even imagine the kind of emotion and energy that leaves behind these people. I know it's just their vessel, but just to know like your body is just stacked up with hundreds of other bodies laying there, not properly put in the ground at rest. It's got to leave a lot of residual energy behind. So we did the Washoe Club tour, which was super cool and spooky. And there's a crypt in there at the back and we actually got to go inside of it and we took some photos and they used to stack bodies in there as well. I'm sure that a lot of these bodies weren't properly identified and most likely just put in the ground without any markers because if they're sitting there for months and months at a time, people are dying of pneumonia and fever. I don't think they would care at that point to actually make sure that they're getting a proper burial. They're just like, let's get these in the ground. The ground's thawed out. These buildings weren't in the best of healthy living condi conditions either. They were drafty, there was asbestos in the walls, lead in the windows, causing a distorted view when looking through it, and everyone was drinking. 
You mix drinking in and you can imagine all the belligerent fights that would probably break out, leading to pistols being drawn. There are actually new studies suggesting lead exposure can cause an increase in crime. And I remember when we did the Washoe Club tour, the tour guide had us look through this window that was very blurry. It seemed like you were wearing drunk goggles. And he said that was one of the original windows and that it had lead in it. And the lead was driving a lot of the people mad, which now that's confirmed, I could see that. Can I take a break and uh, Mm -hmm. tell you about, not like touristy, but um, with the crypt, you can actually go by yourself into the crypt of the Washoe Club and sit in there. It's like free range, dude. So you can like turn off the lights and uh, I've done it many a times where like I'm just like by myself, sneak off and uh, you can... Yeah, turn off all the lights, feel the history. Like, it's not even spooky. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you're going to, like, see you do this now. But it's like, you turn off the lights and just, like, sit. And, like, you can just, like, feel, like, the right. the past around I you. I feel like and it's, it's more like, sad than spooky. Yeah, Those dead not, bodies yeah. just waiting. Yeah, that's not saying there's, like, the, the sadness, like, over spookiness or whatever. It's just, yeah, you can just, like, feel the, the amount of pain, the amount of, like, hurt that that town has been through like Mm -hmm. especially through all the fires that town's been through it's fucking insane dude like how how much shit is burnt down in that city (laughs) yeah the washoe club is definitely spooky y'all should check that out there's a photo being captured this lady was taking a selfie and you can clearly see what looks like this old woman with her hair in a bun behind her it's like an apparition and above the crypt kind of was this man scotty's room that he stayed in and he's the more aggressive ghost that resides there and he actually killed himself because his young boy was playing with a friend and they ended up falling through a mine shaft and they couldn't get the kids out and they probably died instantly and so Scotty couldn't take it anymore so he shot himself and that's right above the crypt like there's no roof to it right. and people think they hear him all the time. That's what I'm saying is, if you get the chance, go to VC, go in the crypts, shut up the lights, and just, like, chill. It's very <laughs> cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, very, very I have cool. those, those photos, too. We'll, we can include them if you guys like. Speaking of fires, the worst event in VC history was the Great Fire of 1875. These mining towns were not fire safe whatsoever. VC has had a few fires, but the Great Fire that caused so much destruction and heartache was caused by a single oil lamp. The fire started on A Street in Kate Shea's boarding house when a lamp was accidentally knocked over, probably because people were drunk. Well, it's still all wood, too, which mm-hmm. is the craziest thing. I'm like... Yeah, those buildings are made of very, like, yeah. dry yeah. wood, just any cheap, quick lumber they could get, get and set up shop. And now all that wood is even more dry and old. I'm like... Christ, right. dude! Like, <laughs> dude, do we have to do a live podcast at Silver Queen? That'd be yeah, sick. Yeah, that would Get be so cool. You like the yeah live one. Definitely, I would love that. That would be so cool. I was thinking about that too, like doing live podcasts soon right. at like cool. spooky places. Do that one, and then the um, the Hobo Cemetery that we're yeah. gonna get into one day. Mm-hmm. So apparently, the night that the fire started, the winds were really bad too. The fire spread and no building in its path was spared, and it even took the buildings made of metal and brick due to the intense heat. The volunteer fire company tried to combat the fire but could not pump water quick enough to beat the large scale the fire was growing to. People feared it would reach the mine shafts and cause dangerous damage, and a lot of time these mine shafts also have gases that you can't even smell, you can't even detect. And if a fire reached that, who knows what would happen. That's why they would always set, set a bird free. I think it was usually a cardinal. They'd have, like, canaries. Yeah, usually. canary. Like, canaries in cages while you're going mm. to the mines. Uh, it's so sad. But, yeah, they would set, like, a canary free. Or they would hold the cage in front of them. And what the canaries love to sing. They're always talking. They're chatting. Once the bird got silent, they knew it was no longer safe and that the air was toxic. That's a good fear to have. (laughs) Around two o'clock, the flames finally went out and one of Nevada's largest cities also went out. Keep in mind, this town was big back in the day. 
2,000 structures were destroyed. Homes, churches, saloons, businesses, mining buildings, and more. The damage was estimated to be around $1 million, which you can use an inflation calculator if you want to figure that out because I didn't look look that up. <laughs> right. I feel like you have to look at uh, VC back in the day as like Vegas to us now. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, VC was like that one place that you would go to to have a little Sin City like oh, as yeah. Vegas is um, now. Yeah, right. <laughs> they <laughs> had City, around like every... I'm sure every corner was probably a bar back then or yeah. a brothel or yeah. something. Well, you were there to get drunk and uh, have something with the lead of the night and probably get into a fight, dude. Yeah. It's a <laughs> fucking rock and roll town, man. <laughs> a lot of paranormal investigators agree that BC is a hot spot for paranormal activity and may even be the most haunted place in Nevada. The Silver Queen is what we are mainly focusing on today. This hotel is around 145 years old today and the oldest hotel in town, according to one of the articles I read. It still has a lot of its authentic quirks and feels like you're stepping back in time. It was built in 1876. The hotel has, I believe it's 28 rooms, but I did read somewhere that it's 29 rooms. And we've gotten the same room twice, like I said earlier. And it's actual keys, you guys that you have to stick in the lock and turn to open the door. There are no door fobs. There are no cards that you slide. It's an old hotel and it's... N- no AC, no heat. <laughs> yeah. The room we like is on the upper floor by, by the fire escape, like I mentioned. And most of the rooms only have one outlet and no air conditioning. It was not fun to stay in the summertime. When we stayed during that Civil War reenactment weekend, tossing and turning I keep this apartment like an ice box at night because I like to be cozy in blinkies and I like it to be freezing cold outside the blinkies so we recommend if you plan to stay at the Silver Queen go in the fall the winter or the spring because if not you're gonna be miserable sleeping at night right. in like 90 degree room right. by, the time we go, by the time we got to the room I was just hammered and I fell asleep both times <laughs> <laughs> We will definitely be looking into some other places to stay in the future as well for the experience. I do want to go back to the Silver Queen Hotel though and I want to ball out on one of the more glamorous rooms. We've only stayed in like the the standard rooms with a queen bed and a bathroom with a toilet and small shower. Some of the rooms have 16 foot ceilings which I guess is a sign of wealth back then and claw foot tubs. I would like one facing Main Street and I believe it's called C Street. Our room was facing the opera house, and I feel like at night you just hear so many weird sounds and noises coming from over there. The whole town looks so cute, and it seems like it's out of an old western show. Other spooky stories off topic a little. I remember we were chatting with someone about exploring BC and just the different spooky places, and they were saying that at night sometimes it's super weird by the churches because there will be like no wind and then the wind just like trees will randomly look like they're like bending over or moving but there's no wind or vice versa it's super windy and then the trees are staying completely still there's a lady that um was talking about the ships in sd too right Mm -hmm. she went to the like the naval i think so was that the tattooed faced girl yeah she was pretty cool i was wondering she, where people go yeah. that's all <laughs> she does is like tour and uh just do spooky stuff but we met her th- through smoking cigarettes dude in bc so you don't have to smoke the cigarettes couches but in the back yeah just go out into the back of the silver queen have a drink and you'll meet some really cool cats dude <laughs> also if you go in the summertime beware of all of the wasps and hornets that hang out at the back when you, the little smoking area <laughs> Inside the hotel on the ground floor is a bar with a little performance area. We actually got to see Elvis play there, and he was singing David Bowie. Who here can say that they watched Elvis sing David Bowie? I can. He was singing Heroes. <laughs> he was hugging all the black people, yeah, too. And, uh, he was milking it. He was like... <laughs> like Only the black people, the, but he the, shook the, your hand. Yeah, it was like the one uh, black family in the room he came up like we could be heroes and he was like rubbing the little black kid's head and I was like yeah. <laughs> come you're, on 
Come on, man. <laughs> we were laughing about him, but was it was like, fun to watch. <laughs> what do you got to hide in your bones? <laughs> I probably have, like, saved Snapchat videos in my Snapchat archive or archive that I could look at. I don't know if I've saved them. There is, the bar is actually absolutely stunning with a glass backdrop, and it's just so beautiful, the wood and the way they have it set up. I love it. There is a wedding chapel inside the hotel, and the door is right by the bar to the wedding chapel. The door that leads up to the rooms is actually not inside the bar at all. It's outside the building. It's two separate doors. So there's a door that leads inside the bar, and then there's a door that leads up these really tall, steep stairs to the rooms. The chapel's cool, too, because you can stand in there by yourself in the dark as well. They have that... Uh... True. Those screens set up where you can see what's going on, like by yourself. Yeah, that was really cool. Next time, I want to go in there by myself. Ooh. Yeah. So they have a night vision camera set up in the chapel, and it's a live feed playing on a flat screen TV at the bar, so customers can watch. I show a lot of this in the old vlog video I made a few years ago, so you can definitely see that as as well. And Nicholas actually went inside of the wedding chapel in the dark and sat as I sat there at the bar watching him you can see orbs flying around and he looks a little uncomfortable in the video so after he comes out I actually go in there with him I didn't capture any of this but we're both in there in the dark and I was sitting in one of the seats towards the front and he was sitting away from me in a few rows behind and you just get like this weird sensation that you're being watched from like the darkest corners of the room like it's all dark you're in the dark but for some reason, like, some corners seem darker than others, if that makes sense. Otis is hollering out there. <laughs> so, side note, Mark Twain lived in BC and would move away and come back and move away and come back. He started the Territorial Enterprise Newspaper Company that I believe was originally located where the Silver Queen Hotel is, but it, it burned down in one of the fires and he got it rebuilt diagonally, diagonally across the street. I think Mark Twain also was in another Nevada mining town at one point, and he was trying to make it out as a miner, but he just wasn't cut for it. He, he wasn't a miner, and he would, as a hobby, write little stories and whatnot, and that's what actually kick-started his career was people liked his stories, and he was a good writer. The owner of the hotel was Charles Tennis Carlson, but he went by Tiny because Tennis sounded too much like penis, and I think there was somebody else named Charles or something, but yeah, he went by Tiny. He got told that they weren't going to call him Tennis anymore because it sounded like penis. Little penis. Little fact for you. Penis. <laughs> Tiny remembered in the late 90s when the town was popping, and over there was over 30 saloons, and ce celebrities were everywhere. A few of those celebrities was John Davison, um, Al Hurt, which I think was a Trumpist, I know Janice Joplin hung out at the Silver Queen, I'm pretty sure, and Ernie Ford, to name a few. Captain and Tennille actually got married in the chapel at the Silver Queen Hotel, and they renewed their vows 10 years later. One of their hit songs that you might have heard of is, Love will keep us together, but maybe they should have knocked on wood because later they got divorced in 2014. Little fact for y'all. Piney, even though... He was not tiny. He was actually a pretty big man. He thinks less celebrities were visiting BC because celebrities don't actually hang out or interact with their fans like they used to. The owner now is his daughter, Connie Carlson. Tiny also said he watched Doris Day play there and Liz Taylor had to wait, wait outside because she was too young. He was a businessman and liked to buy and sell buildings. He started leasing a few buildings and made some good money. He sold the Red Garter Building, the Wild Bunch Gifts Building, the Barrel Candy Building, and some houses. The Barrel Candy Building is super cute, and they have just barrels and barrels full of all different candies. 10 out of 10 recommend. The Silver Queen Hotel is still in the family. He proudly restored the building before the 90s. It didn't even have bathrooms. He bought the hotel in 1990, the 90s, and it did not have bathrooms. This, one of the things I read about Tiny was that the hotel had 29 rooms and four apartments, a bar, a reception room, and a small chapel 
That's why I'm confused if it's 29 or 28. The hotel offers wedding packages as well. They used to do a lot more weddings back in the day than they do now, and it was actually quoted from Tiny that he just believes people don't care about <coughs> marriage anymore, and I think it kind of bummed him out that people weren't getting married as much as they used to in his, his hotel. The <coughs> bathrooms were built not too long ago, and before they were constructed, constructed, people used a common bathroom that I believe was located at the back of the building outside probably the smoking area all the rooms we've stayed in have a small bathroom we've stayed in a total of three different rooms and we stayed in one room twice the bathroom roof is actually a little bit lower than the the bedroom roof so it's disconnected it seems kind of like a shelf and it's very tiny it's a, there's a toilet in there and right across from it it's a shower the sink is outside the bathroom and another <laughs> little story i have for y'all is nicholas actually threw his undies up on the shelf thing above where the bathroom <laughs> was at one time yeah uh, I, I was also going to bring this up <laughs> so we have a few little easter eggs if you want to find them somewhere try to find them if you find them let us know if there's skid marks you know they're his there are summers if you find skid marks <laughs> mine are clean your skiddies <laughs> your skibbies oh yeah uh, yeah my, my chonies <laughs> are for sure somewhere out there <laughs> <laughs> They're up there too, so no one's gonna. The the service there is really poor as well for cell phones. I have AT and T, and I don't know if it's just AT and T, but Nicholas, you what do you have? Sprint. His was Speed. actually his service is actually better than mine when it's up there. So, like we said, there's no air conditioning, there's no TVs, and luxury rooms i mean there might be a luxury room we just never bought out on one so we'll keep you guys updated there's no fridges as well so a few times when we've gone up there we've actually brought in a cooler filled with ice to keep like our food and i made really good veggie like wraps one time we kept our drinks in there right, and i feel like that's the only experience you have like i, I wouldn't have done it any other way it was fun especially going <laughs> forward like hope there's no fridge no nothing like yeah you're not uh um, you're not there to be fancy. You're not there to like do whatever. You're there to learn about the history and to enjoy yourself. The you're room, not there yeah, to, it's cool because the rooms are yeah. pretty like authentic still of right. how they probably were back in the day. And above the doors, they have these window things that push out, and I think it's like to help with like airflow and to get heat around. Because I'm sure there wasn't heat in the rooms back in the day. There wasn't even electricity. I think the owner tiny actually had a lot of the wiring put in himself and it's just really interesting about how cool and authentic that the hotel still is right and i feel like the point of staying up there is to spend as little time as possible in your room mm -hmm. like there's plenty of places up there open all night and like, just go out and meet the locals dude keep saying that over and over but if you <laughs> go up there meet the locals man we love them so meet much the locals. Yeah. we should make merch and that could be one of the shirts right meet the locals <laughs> The wedding chapel I spoke of that was spooky and had a night vision camera was a makeshift morgue. At one point, it was a makeshift morgue and it was used to store bodies of the deceased. In a lot of towns and cities, when the ground was too hard in the winter, they used rooms to stack the bodies until the ground thawed out and they could bury them. One of the ghosts that resides in the hotel is a lady of the night named Rosie. She is said to have stayed in room 11 and committed suicide by slashing her wrists in the bathtub back in the 1800s. There is actually no real record of Rosie staying there or having existed, but I feel like it wasn't uncommon back then to not leave a paper trail. Nowadays, you need all these documents and signatures to stay places, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people paid under the table. I wonder why she would have killed herself. Maybe depression. Did she lose family or friends? Some people say she was waiting for a lover to return and they never did, so she offed herself. Another story says that she killed a baby and herself, which I don't know about that. And then maybe she was tired of being a sex worker. Back then, it wasn't a choice most of the time because there was no other way for women and women most of the time weren't allowed to do anything else and they needed to make ends meet. Right. Like, what, what outlet would you have a literally just like, sex work and alcoholism it's like just it's so ver a very depressive yeah situation and and it's unfortunate because i heard this podcast the other day that was kind of talking down on prostitutes back in the wild west and 
how it was an occupation. It was a choice, but it really wasn't a choice 99% of the time. There was nothing else for them to do. And it's just really ignorant, I feel like, to be like, it was. A, it's like you're a white man who is saying that it's an occupation and it was a choice. Like, right. Well, nowadays we pray sex work, you know? It's like, yeah. it's like glorified. And I fully like support my friends that do it. But back in the day, I feel like it was uh, the especially in VC it's like a woman had like very few choices mm-hmm. to to do and sex work was uh one of like the if your husband got killed or he yeah. left you and if, you, if, if you, you had, couldn't get a yeah. job in the mines you right. couldn't be a, most of the time you weren't allowed to be a school teacher yeah. or so, so doctor get, getting to boozing it up and sex work dude prostitutes get a bad rap especially by men and by people who have religion but those same people seek out sex workers and then shame them. Rosie likes to mess with men more than women. And if you're a man staying at the hotel and you're by yourself, you're more likely to have an experience with Rosie, especially if you're in room 11. I wish. I tried. <laughs> I sit out there nude. What I'm is like, that called? Sex with a ghost? I'm like, come on, baby. <laughs> come out here. I'm like, my girlfriend's sleeping, Rosie. No, that's me. Come out here. Wake me up at least. Just my kidding. Little peep big ghost. Oh my god. Like I said earlier, this episode has appeared on Ghost Adventures, I believe, a total of five times. And in one of the episodes, Zach actually comes back and apologizes to a spirit that he feels like he offended in a previous episode. He got inspired afterwards to get a number eleven tattooed on himself, just like Room Eleven. And I'm curious. I watched so many of those episodes, but I can't recall what happened. And today I was looking to see if I could watch any of them before we recorded this to have a little more insight for y'all. Hulu said it's not part of my subscription plan. Shout out Hulu for sucking dick. Yeah. The hell? Anyways, (laughs) guests have reported hearing loud footsteps and door slamming. The floor is carpeted, and on a few of these occasions, there is no other guest staying at the hotel at the time. Voices can be heard, rattling knobs, tapping on walls, and apparitions can be seen. The hotel keeps a book where guests are more than welcome to write in their paranormal experiences if they have any during their stay, which is so cool. I didn't even know they did that until I was doing some research about this. I wish we had an experience so we could write it, but we always stay when it's so busy. We always have all those dorks going around with their their (laughs) groups doing their like paranormal things like fucking six o'clock during the day I'm like, what yeah what the fuck are you doing someone's like making yeah, loud at like 3 a.m like fart something. noises from the rooms you ruined on our experience too we paid to fucking stay here bitch yeah. get the fuck out a visitor also said that the curtains in her room were moving but there was no draft obviously there's no ac and the windows were closed some guests report of a mist floating above their bed i think i remember one of the episodes of ghost adventures they caught like a mystical apparition appearing if i'm remembering correctly and other guests have reported odd messages being left on their phone sometimes you can see imprints on furniture like beds as if somebody is sitting there an apparition can be seen on the stairs frequently and people think it's rosy i wonder because we had a room that was kind of like right by the stairs with that window that was it was just a window to the hall it was odd but i wonder because that those stairs are right next to her room too so i wonder if it is her because it's so close to her room male guests have actually had to have told rosie to leave them alone and they would hear footsteps stomping away so male guests that have stayed there can hear somebody trying to rattle on the door or tap and they tell rosie go away and then they hear stomping and everyone who hears stomping thinks it's rosie am i not good enough rosie dude i tried (laughs) i just think when we've gone it's just been too busy for anything to happen (laughs) (laughs) room 13 is also another active room if you want to stay there if room 11 is taken a man reportedly took his life there in 2010 i think just in the hotel in general i'm not sure if it was in room 13 or not the other ghost that is really well known is named Annie, and she is said to haunt the hotel. You can also hear her footsteps, but they are a lot softer than Rosie's. So if you hear stomping, it's most likely Rosie, and if you hear light 
footsteps it's annie and it makes me think like why is R- rosie so loud is she mad or something or is she a bigger gal no i think she just got some attitude dude she's yeah. sassy man maybe and i think uh annie is just kind of like a little bit more non soft-spoken and stuff a little soft-spoken maybe. i feel like uh, rosie's like a little bit more out there and and he's kind of more well, self, if, self-preserved, you know? Right. If Rosie was a lady of the night, I feel like she had to learn how to be more like cutthroat, get clients, and stand her dude. ground. So I don't know if Annie would have been a lady of the night or who she was. You can also hear disembodied voices on EVPs, which is electronic voice phenomenons. And she likes to make tapping sounds. So if you hear a tapping sound, a lot of the time it could be Annie. She is said to have died in a physical altercation with a man. This was back in the Silver Rush days. People think that this fight is like a record repeating itself over and over. And I think that's called a residual haunting where the past events keep repeating themselves. And this is so sad. Purgatory, dude. It reminds me, yeah, of American Horror Story Season 3 Coven. There is this one episode where they're like trying to figure out who's going to be the new Supreme Witch or whatever. And they had to go through their own purgatory. And it was just this miserable repeating record playing over and over and over. And one of the girls, her purgatory was dissecting this frog. It just kept playing over and over and she kept screaming. And so that's what that reminds me of. I hope like her her soul is at rest or reincarnated or whatever. I I just wonder if that's like a little piece of her energy left behind. Because that would be miserable if that was actually her and she was just repeating herself over yeah. and over. I feel like this should be another episode of uh, Purgatory. And yeah. Things. I'll have to add it to the Don't Let Me Forget. Right. Because so I have uh, my own beliefs on that too. Like, fuck, dude. Mm-hmm. like All the times I'm like in a shit and I'm like if I die in this very moment when I being a turd, dude, mm-hmm. I'm just going to be stuck here doing this over <laughs> and over and over and over and over again. Right. So a lady named Julie Christensen she was a writer for a contributing network for Yahoo. She actually stayed at the Silver Queen Hotel in 2011 and felt a really heavy feeling at the end of the hall. So she came out of her room, or she was going to her room, I'm not quite sure, and she felt a really heavy feeling. Then she heard and felt something running towards her and couldn't help but jump, and she kind of gasped as well, like, <gasps> She ran to her room and told her friend who she was staying with what happened. Was she on her vacation or was she on like the terms of being there for Yahoo? I'm not sure. I feel like sometimes people make things up, you know, in their heads. Like Maybe, but uh-huh. her and her friend that she was with after she went inside the room and told her what happened, they did what any sane person would do and they went out to investigate. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. As they walked through the halls, a door slammed shut. They thought that they just aggravated another guest that could have been staying there that night. Old so, man Jenkins, dude. Right. Fucking sleep and don't piss him off. No. Yeah. So they're like, okay, sorry about that, neighbor. <laughs> and they brushed it off. This running phenomenon happened multiple times. They tried to get sleep and couldn't, so they slept with the lights on and still in their clothes just in case they had to make a quick escape. They heard tapping on their door and whispering in the hall. They heard shuffling in the room next door like somebody was rummaging through things and walking around, pacing. When they went to check out the next day, they noticed no other tenants were doing their usual morning struggle walk to the bar downstairs to check out. When you stay at hotels, you always notice people walking around with luggage before, you know, around 11 a.m. when it's time to turn the keys in and people packing their shit up. And they didn't see any of that. She asked the man that was at the bar, he was just standing there sipping some coffee, how many guests were at the hotel the night before, and he let them know that they were the only ones, as well as no hotel staff was there that night. They were the only ones. All the time we've stayed at the hotel has just been super busy and packed with people, and maybe that's why we haven't had anything out of the ordinary happen during our stays there, besides the orbs and the uneasy feeling in the wedding chapel. I would like to get the most expensive room on the least busy night, please. Mm, yes, of course. <laughs> mm. Give me your finest champagne. Give me your finest speech. So, last thing I want to mention just about Virginia City in general is a few events that they 
put on today. I'm part of the Virginia City Facebook group page, which yeah. is fun to well, just... One, one of the funnest towns, dude. They have yeah. so many events constantly. It's like, the, for the spookiest, there's like the silliest town at the mm-hmm. same time. They have so much fun shit. Pepper, the pig... The pig's owner is always posting on there, and it's just super cute. You always notice this guy walking around in a kilt, and Mm -hmm. he has a pet pig that walks around. And then this man that was named Stinky, he was the one everyone would always see and take pictures with his donkey. Mm -hmm. And his Mm -hmm. grandson actually is continuing the legacy because he passed away. He passed away recently, huh? Yeah, I think 2020 or a few months ago. But some events they put on is outhouse races. The Civil War reenactment, Hot August Nights, which is a car show, and the Rib Cook-Off. I'm sure there's a lot more. I know the Opera House is like always popping. It's in action, and they just got a new escape room up there. I've never been to an escape room in general, but they just opened one up in Virginia City. Yeah, like, uh, so that's awesome. Street Vibrations is like very um, like prevalent mm-hmm. up there. Yeah. Like Bucket of Blood. I feel like um, they have a fun time and party during uh, Street Vibrations. It's always a good time to go, dude. You're going to meet the, the silliest of characters and fucking have a good time, dude. I don't know if I don't want to tell my story, dude. This one is so good. I might just hold off. You think so? I think so, yeah. Okay. This one felt good. I want to, like, ruin I it. I feel like you put a lot of input into. You did good. Yeah, I'm just, I think I might save this one, um, the mapes and everything, maybe a more personal spooky night. Yeah, like a, I, just a spooky we could do like an episode where we just tell spooky yeah, stories. I feel like this episode is good. Thank it's you, perfect. Booth. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the episode. The Silver Queen Hotel in Virginia City, Nevada. West side, baby. True. West side till the day I die. West side, bitch. Just but, kidding. Yeah. We're thinking about moving east, but the right. w- always be a west side, bitch. Right. Just, west side. All the old people listening right now are like, West side connection. Off. Bum, 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 bum. I was um, about to go into the Mapes Hotel and uh, some stories about the aftermath of the Mapes, but I think we're going to save that for a different podcast, dude. Like, in this on uh, that note, I feel like this one went great. Yeah, and, thanks, Oh, yeah, man. That was good. So thank you all so much for tuning in. This is Entering the Upside Down Podcast. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. I want to hit 30 followers we are at entering dot the dot upside dot down and give us a follow give us a shout out send us some emails email us at entering the upside down at gmail.com and i want to do a listeners episode where we read your guys's emails and was it also frankfurt yeah frankfurt homie from frankfurt germany hit us up dude i'm sure germany's hella haunted that It'd Let us so know, man. We are so visit. interested in whoever you are. There's some haunted forest. Reach out to us, buddy. If you send us an email with a spooky story, just in the subject line, put like spooky story as the subject so that I can organize it easily. And if you want to be anonymous, make sure to, to put that in there. Like, hey, can you not say my name? Or if it's a story talking about other people as well, but you don't want to put them on blast, mm. you can always change their name in the story so it's about you killing somebody we're yeah, not gonna just, snitch just dude we, we won't name. snitch dude yeah, just tell man. us about we're your, all this is a safe your space. fucking craziness darling. come on <laughs> tell us about you killing someone <laughs> <laughs> our twitter is entering the down i believe the name is entering the upside down yeah so make sure to rate us on itunes i'm really trying to get us to at least five ratings we only have two still so far and we just need to get this algorithm algorithm up y'all so spread the word spread the love we love y'all i made a facebook page so if you look up entering the upside down we are on facebook now and everything i post on instagram will automatically go to the facebook which is exciting oh, shit. we're nice. out there we're doing things nice beans. Uh, also add us to your myspace uh playlist yeah uh, to your top 10 friends list uh just kidding i don't know <laughs> i don't think there's myspace anymore but yeah thank you for everyone that listens very very appreciative and um make sure to like comment subscribe share and we shall see you next time mother lovers bye perfect